watching WGS TV. Welcome to another installment of WGS TV right here on YouTube.com slash WrestleGamer and ZFX TV. I'm the WrestleGamer, Double Beam, Willie Boudreau, and with Battleground being tonight, why don't we go ahead and preview it? Um, we'll start off with the kickoff match um, Naomi versus Cameron. Um, well, not a lot of people have put a lot of attention and focus onto the match. Um, you know, it was only a matter of time, you know, ever since Brodus Clay got the boot out of WWE that, uh, it wouldn't be long before WWE would probably just try to kill the whole Funkadaka gimmick altogether, and that's pretty much what they've done with the breakup of, uh, Naomi and Cameron. Naomi could probably do a lot better on her own. You know, it's quite obvious about that. Uh, Cameron's abilities aren't up to par, to be honest with you, since her favorite match of all time was... If I do uh, remember correctly, Melina versus Alicia Fox. You know, take a hint. That's why he got booted off of uh, Tough Enough. Um, as far as this match goes, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see Naomi come out on top, to be honest with you. So that's kind of what, why I'm going to go with her for my pick. Now, um, on to the first match I'm going to talk about, which would be the Tag Team Championship. Two out of three falls. Um, the Usos defending against Luke Harper and Eric Rowan. Really, the only ta tag team, legitimate tag team that can feud with the Usos right now is Luke Harper and Eric Rowan. They really aren't... A I can't really think of any other heel tag team right now in the WWE on the main roster. Now, I wouldn't mind seeing the Ascension coming up w once in a while to... Uh, to maybe start feuding, feuding with the Usos, but that's just one thing that's really disappointed me as of late, is the lack of good legitimate tag team uh, rivalries in the WWE. We used to have it, all, have it all the time in the 80s and the 90s, and now we, tag team wrestling has just kind of faded into obscurity in a sense. Um, now, it's good to see Usos on uh, Harper and Rowan as uh, two good tag teams, so... Now, as far as the matchup goes, WWE's really put a lot of stock into the Usos as tag team champions. You know, they uh, they took a chance putting the titles on them, and they've yeah, not disappointed. Sure. You know, they're really starting to grow grow as champions. Um, now, could they put the titles on Harper and Rowan tonight? It's a possibility. It's, it's a possibility. Um, as you know, in all... Uh, two out of three falls matches, we know it's always going to go down to the third fall, you know, they're always going to have, well, you know, it, it really doesn't matter who's going to go first, you know, who's going to get the first fall, and then who's going to get the second fall, it always goes to one apiece, and then we're going to see someone uh, get the win on the third fall, you know. Now, I'm not going to expect a classic, like, the Demolition and the Brain Busters, uh, from back in the 80s, I wonder how many of you guys remember that one, but... I wouldn't be surprised to see a good match between these two guys. I mean, they really did did well at Payback, so I it really wouldn't it really wouldn't surprise me at all to see them do a great match for uh, Battleground tonight. Now, speaking of the Wyatt's family, we have Bray Wyatt taking on Chris Jericho. Um, one thing, you know, like I've said, you know, when he returned a few weeks ago, it was great to see Chris Jericho back in the WWE. Um. Well, they need to have Bray Wyatt or feud with somebody other than John Cena, and uh, uh, Sir, but WWE probably thought that the fans would still gravitate towards Bray Wyatt when he's going against someone like Chris Jericho, but that turns out to be the exact opposite of what's been going on. If you guys have been watching, you know, the uh, the promo they did on last week's Friday Night Smackdown, uh, the fans were actually chanting boring, boring towards Bray Wyatt. I'm so sorry, man. And, uh, the like I said, and, and the, the really starting to transition and better back into a heel. Sorry, you know, because apparently anyone who uh, goes against John Cena with the uh, 
the fans today and like, Yay, we love you. You hate John Cena just like we do. Um, as far as this uh, matchup goes, um, I would not be I would not be surprised to see interference from Harper and Rowan. Um, you know, regardless of you know what what the match lineup is, you know where they are on the card. Um, I would not be surprised to see them uh, being used that way and Bray Wyatt getting the win. So that's pretty much um, my thoughts on that. Um, up next, Paige and AJ Lee for the Divas Championship. Now this one's going to be hard to call because we've got two great entering female talents like AJ Lee and Paige. You know, both of them have, have had great runs as Divas Champions. And, you know, it's very difficult to say where they're going to go from you know, from there. You know, are they going to put the title back on Paige and have her turn heel? Or are they going to keep it on AJ Lee and still have Paige turn heel? It, it's very hard to say where they're going to go with that. Um, but, uh, l let's just say, you know, either way, you know, whether it's going to be AJ Lee or Paige, of course you do. the only thing that would really save this match if it wasn't a three-minute match, like it, it, the, the last two encounters were. So let's, let's just hope that something like that will not happen tonight at Battleground. You know, that's the only thing that would really kill it. You know, is WWE not letting two of their best divas shine on a, on a pay-per-view stage like Battleground tonight. Now, albeit Battleground is not probably one of their biggest pay-per-views, but it, it still would be horrendous uh, if WWE made that decision to go out there and tell them to only have a 90-second match. I think it would really, really hurt them. Um, now, we have the... Former members of the Shield going against each other in the form of Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins. Now this thing has just been building up for weeks and weeks. I know ever since um, Seth Rollins broke up the Shield, you know we've seen the Shield go their separate ways, and um, Ambrose has been kind of obsessed with wanting to get back at Seth Rollins. That's kind of how they've been building up the story. It's going to be a wild match, to be honest with you. You know, we've seen them do a lot of crazy stuff. You know, we've seen them, uh, Rollins take, uh, Ambrose take the curb stomp, not only backstage on Monday Night Raw, but what we saw on Friday Night SmackDown, him taking the curb stomp on the steel steps. So, it's going to be very interesting to see where they go with Ambrose and Rollins. Uh, I don't see it having a clear finish for some reason, you know. You know, and maybe if it was like a street fight or something, possibly would see a clear finish. But this would probably be more along the lines of maybe somebody from the authority coming out to kind of interfere. You know, I can't, for some reason, I just can't see it having a good finish. I just can't see it having a clear, solid finish um, for it. So, Jack Swagger and Rusev, possibly the only real way to turn the real Americans face in the WWE was to have them go against a uh, a uh, foreign heel in the form of Rusev and Lana and I'm gonna say it, it really it's, they've really been making the real Americans look strong um, it's been amazing how the fans just immediately gravitated towards towards them you know especially going against you know Rusev and Lana, and you've been seeing a lot more people with their hands over their hearts. Even Swagger's got new merch. If you saw him on, on SmackDown, it's just a guy with a hand over his heart. And, uh, and people going, you know, we the people. And a lot of them probably want to see Swagger topple Rusev, but given the way that they've built Rusev as of late, I, I, to be honest with you, I would not be surprised to see Rusev go over on Swagger. Now, I'm not saying Swagger is not, not good enough to probably, you know, snap the uh, the, the streak of sorts. Now, I'm not saying he, uh, Rusev is undefeated. He's not undefeated, but he's yet to be pinned or made to submit. Uh, we know that Swagger can apply the, the Patriot Lock, but will WWE say, you know what, 
swagger goes over on Rusev tonight. I'm gonna give that a probably a 45% probability of happening. Um, because I think with Rusev being new into the company and the way that he's been built as kind of trying to be the new monster heel in the company, I would say a 55% chance of him being put over on Swagger tonight. The Intercontinental Championship Battle Royal. Um, <clears throat> that one, again, that's going to be hard to, to call. I mean, we've got a lot of great names in, in this. Um, Cesaro, Kofi Kingston, The Great Khali, Rob Van Dam, Dolph Ziggler, Big E, uh, Ryback, Curtis Axel, Alberto Del Rio, Bo Dallas, Sheamus, Fandango, Sincata, R-Truth, Xavier Woods, Heath Slater, yeah, WWE's gonna put the Intercontinental Championship on Heath Slater. Uh, Diego, yep, <laughs> that's another big, sh that's another long shot. The Miz and Titus O'Neil. Um, this is basically, a, you know, a 1 in 20 shot. Of trying to call who's going to uh, be the new Intercontinental Champion because of the injury suffered by Come Bad on, News Bear. Uh, but looking down these names, I would not be surprised if they put it on Cesaro or Rob Van Dam for that matter. But uh, Mids coming back, you know, with this whole new Hollywood gimmick, um, I think the Intercontinental Championship could help that gimmick. I'm not saying, you know, Definitely 100% chance that Miz is going to become the Intercontinental Champion tonight. Um, Sheamus seeks to unify the United States in the Intercontinental Championships. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they went that route. To be honest with you, I wouldn't. I would not be surprised if they put Sheamus uh, over and they give him the Intercontinental Championship and they unified the secondary championships. I mean, they did it for the WWE Championship and the World Heavyweight Championship to stop them from doing it with their secondary titles in the United States title in the Intercontinental Championship. Wouldn't be a bad move in my opinion. And uh, finally, the main event to talk about, the Fatal 4-Way match. John Cena defending the WWE World of Rage Championship against Roman Reigns, Kane, and Randy Orton. Now, unlike some people on here, I actually give legitimate, logical wrestling talk and discussion. I'm not going to base all of my opinions on pure hatred that people have for John Cena. Now, if you, if you guys hate John Cena, that, you know what? Congratulations. Do you want a cookie? Um, because apparently you think you understand the entire wrestling business in itself. You know, you don't understand you know, how Cena can put asses in seats. You know, and sell out arenas. Nah, we're tired of seeing him. We want to see somebody else. Now, I know fans want to see Roman Reigns as the WWE World of Weight Champion uh, tonight. Honestly, would he be ready? You know, you know, could, I really don't know, to be honest with you. Um, I think he would have to have a run as a secondary champion first, see how he would kind of handle it. You know, you know that kind of spotlight, that kind of attention being on him, because you know, ever since the Shield broke up, he's been kind of thrust almost into the spotlight as of late. You know, um, with all the goings on, especially with him going against the Authority and everything like that. Now, could WWE put the championship on tonight? I want to give that possibly a 35% chance. Um. The probability of Randy Orton getting it through help from Kane. Very hard to say. You know, we've seen we've seen promos uh, over the past couple of weeks about how Kane is not happy with uh, Randy Orton being able to uh, being forced to work with him. So I don't know if WWE is going to go that route. Um, and all honestly. Um, because we've already seen the, the SummerSlam poster being leaked. Um, I've been meaning to do a discussion video about that, guys, and I'm, I'm promising. I promise you I'll get to it as soon as I, you know, find the time to do it. But, uh, because of that leaked poster, I gotta go with John Cena. 
I gotta go with John Cena retaining. You know, if, you know, they leak in the poster saying, "Oh, John Cena to defend the WWE World of Champion show against Brock Lesnar." Um, but SummerSlam, problem with in a month's time, I think it would make more sense to keep the championship on John Cena if they were really gonna go that route. I know that's really gonna piss off, but piss off a lot of the Cena haters out there. Like, oh, why are you picking John Cena? John Cena sucks. You need to think like us. You're not a real wrestling fan unless you hate John Cena like us. Well, um, I hate to inform you, Cena haters, but uh, whose YouTube channel is this? Is it your YouTube channel or is it my YouTube channel? I think it's my YouTube channel. I'm entitled to my opinion on my YouTube channel. And my opinion is John Cena is a good talent, and I believe that the WWE will keep the championship on him tonight at Battle despite all of you haters out there. So that's been basically been my rundown of Battleground and. What I want to know now from you guys out there is, what are your thoughts on Battleground tonight? You know, who do you see coming out on top? You know, who does, who's going to become the new Intercontinental Champion? Do you guys kind of agree with me about my take on John Cena? You know, because of the whole thing with SummerSlam being around the corner and what they've done? Do you see Paige coming out with the Divas Championship? Do you see AJ Lee keeping it? You know, do you see Jericho going over on Bray Wyatt? And all that and more, guys. I really want to know what you guys have to say. Be sure you put your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and favorite this video. And don't forget to please subscribe to YouTube.com slash RussellGamer and YouTube.com slash Network if you haven't already. So, with that being said, I'm the Russell Gamer, Double B, Billy Boudreaux, saying thank you very much for watching.